Good afternoon, everybody. Dick Carlin speaking to you from Valparaiso University, where the 1994 college football season about to get underway as the Valparaiso University Crusaders host the Fighting Bees of St. Ambrose University out of Davenport, Iowa. And we look for a, a great ball game this afternoon. These two teams got together last year in the opening game of the year over in Davenport, and the Crusaders won at 37 to 30 in a wild and woolly football game and we expect maybe to have the same thing here this afternoon. These two teams are looking for exceptional years after coming off good seasons last year and they're looking for really good seasons this year. Today's game is sponsored by Harley Snyder Insurance, the Sports Shop, Getaway Tours, the Foul Ball, the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association, the United Way, Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, and Radio 1 Communications, Indiana 105. The captains are meeting in the middle of the field before the start of this afternoon's ball game. The Crusaders come in under Coach Tom Horn with 15 starters back, 7 on offense and 8 on defense. And uh, 7 of those starters are either first or second team, all Pioneer Football League recognition last year. They include Shane Snyder as a preseason 1AA All-American, according to the Sporting News. Jeff Seymour and John Polyak back on that defensive team. John Lyon in the uh, offensive line. And Ozzie Young, the uh, exciting, maybe best all-purpose back in the league, is back along with the leading ground gainer, Trevor Bell. We'll be back with the opening kickoff of today's game between the Valparaiso University Crusaders and the Fighting Bees of St. Ambrose. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. As an auto owner's insurance agent, I take your needs seriously and work hard to find you the best coverage available. As an independent agent, I'm able to provide you with the policies and coverage best suited to your individual needs. You see, auto owners selects agents the same way you do with a great deal of care. For the best coverage at reasonable rates, call your independent auto owner's agent today. Call your auto owner's agent, Harley Snyder Insurance, with offices in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Portage. Put a sock in it. That's right, put a sock in it. As you head back to school this fall, the weather's bound to cool off. So if you want to keep wearing your comfortable Birkenstocks, take our advice, put a sock in it. Birkenstock, the comfort shoe, available at the Sports Shop, 60 Lincoln Way in Valparaiso. Birkenstock in six different styles and an assortment of colors sure to please. The Sports Shop, 60 Lincoln Way, downtown Valparaiso. Ready to go with the opening kickoff of this afternoon's game. Deep to receive for the Valparaiso Crusaders will be Ozzie Young, the kicker. For the Fighting Bees is uh, number 89, and that is Robert Sanchez, a 6'2", 195-pound freshman from Walnut, California. So we're ready to go as the season about to get underway for these two universities. Approach the ball, and now they're going to have to stop and do it again. The clock hasn't been set yet. The clock still says 11 seconds on it, which, of course, is uh, for the pregame, and... Uh, they haven't been able to get a reset, so they forgot to reset the clock. They'll do that. They'll set it to 15 minutes, and we'll be ready to get this ball game underway. Deep for Valparaiso is Ozzie Young. To receive, he stands at about the five-yard line. Murphy and Sazone up a little bit in front of him. So now we're ready to go. Sanchez gets ready to kick it off. Officials wait for everybody to get ready. The clock is reset, and here we go. Now we're going to start. There's the kick. It's a high kick drifting to the right. Young lets it go through the end zone, and it'll be first and 10 for Valparaiso out at the 20-yard line. So first and 10 for the Crusaders out at the 20-yard line in their own territory to start the year. Nick Browder is a quarterback, number 12. You see him coming in there. He's the sophomore who looked so good at times last year. Pollock and Jackson are the ends. McHale, Elijah Fitzgerald, and Adams across the front, along with John Lyon, the all-conference tackle, who's back this year. 
Sets him down. He's got Young behind him and Bell in the I formation. And Browder barks out the signals. There's the snap on the option to the right side. Now the pitch to Young trying to get around the corner. It's going to be caught and dropped back at about the 16-yard line. They went on the option to Ozzie Young that time and not much there as the Fighting Bees were able to come up and make the tackle. That'll put the ball back at about the 18-yard line where it's going to be a loss of two, make it second down and 12 at the 18. Routers the quarterback, Fanolio, Bell, and Young the backfield. Fanolio the wide receiver. Bill Duke will do the place kicking today, and Don Kepke will be the putter for the Crusaders. Out wide to the left side go Heinrich, who's in the ball game, and Doug Holock. Nick Browder, the I formation behind him with Bell and Young. Jackson, the tight end on the right. Browder rolls left, wants to throw, stands, fakes it, now fires it out here, and it's incomplete. Knocked away from Heinrich and out of bounds. Good defensive play that time by Jason Benoit of St. Ambrose. So it's going to be third down and 12. The ball still at the 18-yard line. Defensively for St. Ambrose, Manchester, Aldridge, Verdun, Kohler, and Paulson across the front. The linebackers are Moss and Timmons, and they're 5-2. Defensive backs are Brown, Sadler, Benoit, and Zalesha. Third down and 12 at the 18-yard line for the Crusaders. Browder sets him in the eye formation again. He's got Fanolio out wide left, Holuck wide right. Straight back this time, stands in, fires it out here. He's got him open and overthrows him. Doug Holock got behind everybody, and Browder just overthrew him. So it's going to be fourth down for the Crusaders. They're going to have to kick it away. So the Crusaders come up empty on their first possession. And they're going to have to kick it away. On to do the punting for the Crusaders will be... Dan Kepke, a 6'1", 184-pound freshman. Well, this is going to be Paul Van Dam. They switched on us, the 6'1", 191-pounder. There's the snap. Van Dam approaches a kick. Nice sailing kick. Taken at about the 42. Fumble the football. It's loose on the ground, but I believe St. Ambrose might be on it. And they did pick it up, so it'll be the Fighting Bees football first down and 10 at the 42-yard line. So first and 10 at the 42 for St. Ambrose. First time they've had the football this afternoon. 13 minutes and 52 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. St. Ambrose comes to the line. It's Chad Duffin at quarterback. They got the eye backfield with Keith Rickson and Lionel Porter. Good running back, number two. He comes in motion. Now shifts to the right side. Duffin looks over the defense and barks out the signal, spins it around, gives it off to Rickson. He breaks one tackle, gets to the outside of the 45 and out to about the 46-yard line. He picks up about four on the play. So it's going to be second down and six. The flanker is Pavich. He's from Valparaiso coming home to play a football game this afternoon. The tight end is Casey, Richards, Keen, Castry. Poynton and Carney across the front line for the Fighting Bees. Split two men out wide to the right. Shift Porter again as Duffin looks over the defense and goes straight back this time and rolls a little bit right. Stands in under a lot of pressure, fires it out here. He's got his man at the 45-yard line. They're going to say Porter caught the football, but it's going to be for a loss of a yard on the play. Might have been better off not to have caught it. Loss of one on the play. It's going to be third down and seven. Back at the 45. Chad Duffin's the quarterback. Bertubrick is the split in. Fullback is Keith Rickson. Lionel Porter is the halfback. And Porter is a special player for the Fighting Bees. Had a big game last year against the Crusaders. Out wide to the right side is Votubrick. Pavich is the slot on the right side. The split backs as Duffin rolls. Now gives it to Porter. Porter bounces outside, breaks one tackle, and then is caught and dropped right at the 45-yard line. Coming up there for the Crusaders was Eric Miller, the 6'3", 253-pound junior. No gain on the play, and it's going to be fourth down on about seven just across the 45-yard line. So neither team able to move it on their first possession of the ball game. 
Kolyak, Miller. Couple Harrington across that front defensively for Valparaiso. There's the snap and the kick. Young's going to get it at about the 15-yard line. Starts left. Jukes gets around one man. He's to the 25, the 30, and out to about the 33-yard line. So Ozzie Young with a good return. And the Crusaders will have it first and 10 out at their own 33-yard line. So in the change of possession, the Crusaders pick up a few yards, and they'll see if they can do something this time. Nick Browder at the quarterback with Bell and Young behind him in the I formation. That's Felonio out wide to the left side, Holock out wide to the right. Bell yet to get the football, the leading ground gainer from last year. Browder goes back, wants to throw it over the middle, and it's in and out of the hands of Daryl Jackson. A little bit high, but maybe a, a pass that Jackson would like to have again. So it's going to be second down and 10 for the Crusaders. Neither team has done anything offensively so far, and defense was one of the strengths of both of these ball clubs coming in. Holick breaks out of the huddle. He goes out wide to the right side. Coming out wide to the left this time is Michael Tolbert. First action for him this afternoon. Bell and Young set in the eye behind Browder. Gives it off to Trevor Bell, and the big fullback takes it up to the 35. Pick up of just a couple of yards on the play. So it's going to be third down and eight at the 35-yard line for the Crusaders. 11-15 to go in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Neither team has been able to generate any kind of an offense so far, but it's early. Benolio back in the ball game. Holick goes out wide right. Young slots this time on the left side. Trevor Bell having some problems. Lost his mouthpiece. There you go. Now he's going to have to uh, get it quickly, and they'll have to get the snap off. They just get it off. Browder fires it out here, lost it, and too far for Fidolio. So they try to go with the fade that time down the sideline, and it was too far, and Joe Fidolio couldn't come up with it. So Browder 0 for 4 in his passing so far. He's overthrown a couple of them. And back to kick it will be Paul Van Dam again, the six foot freshman. Deep to receive is Pavich. Here's the Oh, a beautiful kick this time. Going to be taken at the 30-yard line. Tries to come around the right side. It's going to be a clip there as the runner is knocked down right at the 30-yard line, but an obvious clip on the play as the Crusaders defender, Noel DeBona, was obviously clipped, and that's going to cost 15 yards. Now they're going to call it blocking in the back. Comes out about the same. They'll mark it off from the spot of the foul, the 28. So that'll move it back to the 18-yard line, make it the 19-yard line, and that's where St. Ambrose will take it over, first down and 10. So St. Ambrose takes it over, first down and 10 at the just short of the 19-yard line. Of their second possession of the afternoon. No score in the ball game. 10.39 to go in the first quarter. Chad Duffin at quarterback. He's got the I formation. He, they shift Porter. The pitch to Porter, trying to get around the side. He's got four blockers in front of him, breaks one tackle, and then dives forward to about the 24. Porter, a good running back. Had a big game last year, 123 yards against the Crusaders at Davenport. Pick up a five on that play. On his first carry of the afternoon, or second carry of the afternoon, I should say. It'll be second down and five at the 24. Duffin looks over. Again, he splits the backs. Wide man out to the right side. Gives it on the counter to Porter that time, and he is hit in the backfield and dropped. And 
coming in there was Tom Cunningham, the outside linebacker for the Crusaders. A loss of two on the play. It's going to be third down and seven. So Cunningham, the 5'10", 181-pound junior, makes the play back at the 22-yard line. Third down seven now for the Fighting Bees of St. Ambrose. Break it out of the huddle. They're led to the line of scrimmage by Castre, a 6'4", 285-pounder. Babbage is the slot on the right side. New wide receiver this time is 86, Ernesto Arandondo. Duffin goes back, wants to throw. He comes back with the screen to the left side of Porter. has got some room. He's at the 35 and out near the 40-yard line. A nice screen pass that time down the left side, and Porter picks him up and gets it all the way out to the 40, an 18-yard pickup where it's going to be first down and 10 for St. Ambrose. So first down and 10 for the Fighting Bees. They're <laughs> biggest play of the game so far, and it's first and 10. Duffin looks over the defense. Marks out the signal. Spins it around, gives it to Rickson this time. The fullback still on his feet. Gets a couple of yards out of it before he's finally drugged down by Eric Miller. And also in on the uh, play was John Paliak. But a pick up a four on the play. Make it second down and six at the 44. Second down and six up near the 44-yard line for the Fighting Bees. Eight minutes and 15 seconds, first quarter. No score in the ball game. Valparaiso Crusaders and the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees. Duffin spins, fakes, rolls straight back, now throws deep. He's got a man open. He's got him. And out of bounds he goes at about the 34-yard line. So Duffin throws a strike to number 89, Robert Sanchez. And Sanchez goes out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. A 22-yard pickup and a first down for the Bees. Duffin now, three out of three, passing the football. And a first down. Duffin at the eye formation this time, gives it to Porter. Porter tries to go the right side, and he's caught and dropped. From the backside, Pajak on the bottom of that pile, Josh Burning, and also uh, Tom Cunningham. Porter gets it down to the 32, only a pick up a two on the play, make it second down and eight. The second down, eight yards to go for the St. Ambrose Bees. Duffin with everybody in tight this time comes on the counter to the wing back Pavich and Pavich fumbles the football gets on it all the way back near the 35 yard line so Pavich never did have tr control of the football and uh, drops it all the way back to the 35 where the bees recover but there's somebody down on the field for the Crusaders so we'll take a break there's time out on the field with 703 to go in the first quarter there's no score in the ball game you're listening, you're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. The Purdue Christmas Show, Branson, Missouri, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Mall of America, the Holland Tulip Festival. Just a few of the attractions visited by Getaway Tours. Getaway Tours is the only touring company in Northwest Indiana that is a registered member of the National Tour Association. So if you're a member of a group that might be interested in an escorted tour for a week or just a day, have Getaway Tours take care of all the details. Call Getaway Tours at 477-4771. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the Foul Ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, 
The Foul Ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, The Foul Ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. Well, while we were away, the quarterback, Chad Duffin, rolled left and uh, misfired on a pass. But there's a holding penalty against St. Ambrose. If the Crusaders turn it down, it'll be fourth down and 10 back at the 34-yard line, almost the 35. They're talking it over with Josh Burning. Decide what the Crusaders want to do. Are they going to take this holding pin or not? And they are. It's going to move them all the way back across midfield to the 49-yard line. So that's a 17-yard penalty. It's going to be third down now and 27 yards for the Fighting Bees. Holding comes from the spot of the foul, so that cost them 10. And that was seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Third down, 27. Duffin sets him down in the I formation. Goes straight back to throw. Stands in, fires it out here, way too high and out of bounds. So it's going to be fourth down and 27. And the B's going to have to kick it away. Oh, it'll be another punt as Young stands down at about the 10-yard line. Tyson Long, the kicker, blocked by the Crusaders. The ball is loose. Got to be recovered at about the 34-yard line. And coming in there for the Crusaders was number three, Doug Holock, the wide receiver, makes the big punt block. And the Crusaders, with the first break of the ball game, will have it first down and 10 at the 34-yard line. Holock came in uncovered and blocked it. Nick Browder comes on the field with the offense. For the Crusaders, first and 10 at the 34-yard line. Manolio goes wide to the right side. Wide to the left comes Michael Tolbert. Across that front, you have Lyon, Adams, Fitzgerald, Elijah, and McHale. High backfield. Router fakes to Bell. Now fires out here and miss fires again. That time he had Tolbert curling open and just missed him. That's going to be second down and 10 at the 34-yard line. The Browder starts off the ball game 0 for 5 in the air. Nick, a very, very talented player, has not had all that much playing time. He played a couple of games last year. Wide to the left this time comes Holick. Wide to the right is Heinrich. As Browder gets it ready. In motion comes Ozzie Young. They give it to Ozzie, and he tries to go the other way and is stopped behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of a yard. Number 86, I believe it was, was in there first for the Bees. That is uh, Arundondo. Ball back at the 35, third down and 11. So again, the Crusaders unable to make anything happen so far in this ball game. Valparaiso yet to get a first down. Browder barks out his signal. And a timeout's going to be called. Now a flag goes down as the clock runs out. And the referee says delay of game. They didn't get the clock stopped quick enough. So that's going to cost them five yards. That'll move it back to the 40-yard line where it's going to be third down and 16 for the Crusaders. Steve Heinrich comes in the ball game with the play from Tom Horn on the sidelines for the Crusaders. 
Sets him down, wide middle both sides. Holick is left and Heinrich is right. Gives it off to the fullback, Trevor Bell, and Trevor dives off the right side for a couple of yards down to about the 37, give him three, make it fourth down and 13. So fourth down and 13, and the Crusaders going to punt it away. Paul Van Dam going to come on to try to do the job and try to pin St. Ambrose very, very deep in their own territory. He'll be standing at about the 50 when he gets rid of it. St. Ambrose not sure this is going to happen. They have everybody up tight. A snap. Flag goes down. There's the kick. High kick is going to bounce at about the five and into the end zone. The Crusaders couldn't stop it, but a flag is down. Let's see what that's going to be all about. Legal procedure against the Crusaders, and St. Ambrose will probably turn that down and take the football at the 20 yard line where it'll be first down and 10. Neither team has showed much offensively here in this first quarter so far. 4.55 to go. Illegal procedure against Valparaiso turned down. So it'll be first and 10, St. Ambrose at the 20 yard line. No score in the ball game. Duffin breaks him out of the huddle. He's got Keith Rickson at fullback. Lionel Porter is the tailback. Porter now shifts. The spin, the handoff to Porter. Goes to the left side, breaks a tackle. He's got some more room and fires out to about the 30. He's going to be close to the first down. That's They're going to spot it right at uh, just short of the 30-yard line, so that's going to be about a half a yard short. So it's second down, less than a yard to go for the Fighting Bees. Pavich comes out wide to the right side. Up at the top of your screen, wide to the left is Wotubrick. Duffin spins to Porter again, comes off the right side this time, is going to get a yard, and that's all he's going to need for the first down as he fights his way out to the 31-yard line, first and 10. First down, 10 yards to go for St. Ambrose, their third first down of the afternoon. End of the ball game for the Crusaders. You saw coming in there was Matt Murphy. Replace Hol or replace Palyak. First and ten at the 31. Duffin rolls, gives it to Porter on the delay, and he is caught and dropped. And back he goes as Jeff Seymour makes the play on Porter at about the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play where it's going to be second down now, 10 yards to go. So a great play by Seymour. The 6'2", 229-pound junior linebacker for the Crusaders. Murphy comes out wide to the left to pick up the wide receivers. They split the backs this time. Porter goes to the left side. As Duffin rolls, fakes to Porter, rolls right. He's under a lot of pressure. Fires it over the middle. It is intercepted and dropped. Intercepted and dropped by Shaul Shahid. Shahid had it and just couldn't hang on. So that goes incomplete. It'll be third down and 10 at the 31 yard line. Third down 10 at the 31. Bayuk back in the ball game for the Crusaders and Murphy leaves. Duffin sets him down with a split backfield. He's got wide outs to the top of the screen and one to the bottom. And now flag goes down as again to delay a game. This time against St. Ambrose. They took too long. That 25 second clock ran out. 
So that'll move it back to about the 26-yard line where it's going to be third down and 15. Three minutes exactly to go in the first quarter. No score on the ball game. Neither team has been very impressive offensively. A little bit out of sync to start the season out. Not that unusual in your first ball game. Third down, 15 at the 26. Duffin rolls back. Gives it straight ahead to a new fullback in there for the uh, Bees. That's number 40, Nick Dimling. And Demling will carry the football for a short gain to the 30-yard line. He picked up four, and it's going to be fourth down and 11, and St. Ambrose will have to kick it away. No score in the ball game. Two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Long will punt it away. Tyson Long is a 6'2", 180-pound sophomore. There's the kick. End over end. Young is going to let it bounce. Picks it up. Out about the 32. Gets around the corner. Jukes one man to the 40. And then finally out of bounds. So Ozzie Young. Pretty decent return. And again, the Crusaders with pretty good field position. Out at the 46-yard line where it's going to be first down and 10. First and 10 for the Crusaders, their own 46-yard line. Still no score in the ball game. Dick Harlan from Crusader Field, campus of Valparaiso University, the opening 1994 football game for the Valparaiso Crusaders. Looking for big things this year. And they got double wings this time with Bell, the only running back. Now Young goes in motion. Router goes back, now throws over the middle. He's got his receiver as he finds Daryl Jackson. That time, Browder delivered it to Jackson, and he gets it across midfield and down to about the 44-yard line. Going to be just shy of the first down. It's going to be second down and a half a yard. So for the first time today, Browder is able to complete a pass. He's one out of six now. That one to Jackson right across the middle. It'll be second down, less than a yard, just inside the 45. Nick spins, gives it off to Trevor Bell, the fullback, and he'll fight forward. I'm not sure if he's going to get there or not. Not much there for Trevor. And St. Ambrose expecting the fullback that time, and he's going to be short. No gain. It's going to be third down and less than a yard. Last year, Bell went for 534 yards and had a couple of really, really big games for the Crusaders. He was the leading ground gainer on the season for Valparaiso. Tough, tough fullback. 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Browder barks out the signals. Spins on the option. Keeps it himself. He's to the 40. He's down to the 36-yard line. And that's the first time they ran the option for Nick Crowder, and that's what he can do for you. The sophomore is a very, very gifted athlete, and he can turn it upfield and take it. That time, eight yards and a first down for Valparaiso at the 36-yard line. That the first first down of the quarter for Valparaiso. First and ten, just short of the 30, or just across the 36-yard line. Heinrich out wide right. Tolbert out wide left. Browder goes back, wants to throw. He's got a screen set up. He's got Ozzie in. Ozzie dropped the football. Tried to run before he caught it. You see it happen so often in football. Young tried to turn it upfield before he made the catch. And it's going to be second down and 10. And they had it. It was set up out in front of Ozzie Young. And Ozzie tried to anticipate just a little bit and take off before he was able to catch the football. You've got to have the ball to take it with you. So it's second and 10 at the 36. Browder. Spins, fakes to Bell, goes back. There's a lot of pressure, steps away from that. He's got plenty of time. 
Now rolls right. Got plenty of room to run. He's to the 35, to the 30, and out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. And again, the athletic ability of Nick Browder does the job. And Nick able to take it all the way down to the 27-yard line, I believe. 20, yep, 27, a pickup of nine. It's going to be third down and a yard to go for the Crusaders. So Browder now with 17 yards on two carries. Wide to the right side goes Tolbert. Bell is the slot on the right side. Heinrich out wide left. Browder goes back, fakes to Young, rolls right. Wants to throw. Under a lot of pressure, and this time throws it away. Tried to go to Trevor Bell. The official started to reach for his flag and then decided not to because Trevor Bell was somewhere in the area. So it's fourth down and a yard to go for the Crusaders. With just seven seconds to go here in the first period of play, no score in the ball game. Finolio comes in the ball game. Holock and Finolio come out wide to the left side as they overload on the left. Bell and Young settle in in the I formation. Router. To Bell. Bell straight ahead. Going to be very, very close to the first down. It's going to be very, very close. They're probably going to have to bring the chains in. Well, he's going to miss it. Didn't make it. After they put it down, you could see it was obvious he did not make it. So the bees will take over first and ten. At the 26-yard line with just one second to go in the first quarter of play and no score in the ball game. So we'll have one more play and this quarter will be history. Favich and Votrubic go out wide to the left side. They split the backs. Porter and Rickson. Duffin gives it to Porter. Porter trying to get around the corner. Steps inside at the 30. Polyak gets him from behind out to about the 32-yard line. So that's it. The first quarter has ended. The score after one, Valparaiso nothing, St. Ambrose nothing. You're watching Valparaiso University football. You're invited to enjoy delicious pancake and sausage breakfast Wednesday, September 7th at the Popcorn Tent in Valparaiso. The Downtown Valparaiso Business Association will provide the pancakes, the sausage, and beverages for only $3.50. Get your tickets today from many Downtown Valparaiso merchants from the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association office on the lower level of the NBD Bank Building at the Popcorn Office or buy them at the door. Serving starts at 7 at the Popcorn Tent the corner of Lafayette and Jefferson Streets, Valparaiso. Indiana 105 is your local Northwest Indiana radio station with local Northwest Indiana news and local Northwest Indiana weather, including exclusive up-to-the-minute color radar reports. Indiana 105 has Jim and Chris in the morning, Phil King in the afternoons, and Steve Witt in the evenings. And we play the best country music in Northwest Indiana. We're your number one country music station. Indiana 105. No score in the ball game as we start the second period of play. Second down and three for St. Ambrose at their own 33-yard line. Neither team has done much offensively in this first part of the ball game. Chad Duffin, the freshman quarterback, sets him down for St. Ambrose. Split backs. Gives it off on a new running back in there. That's number 19, Chad Coutone. And Coutone takes it off the right side for a few yards as he gets it across the 35 and out to the 37-yard line. But enough for the first down as he picks up four. First and 10 at the 37. First down and 10 at the 37-yard line for the 
St. Ambrose Bees. The fighting bees, as it were. Duffin goes straight back to throw. Stands in, fires it out here on the right side. He's got his man open, and out of bounds he goes at about the 48-yard line as he finds Brian Votrubic. So Votrubic goes out of bounds all the way up at about the 48-yard line, a pickup of 11 and another first down for the Bees. So two first downs in a row now for St. Ambrose. We're just underway, second period of play. Duffin goes back, spins, gives it off to Porter's, got some room, cuts inside, the 50, the 45, and finally down he goes at about the 40-yard line. Got away from Shane Snyder, and Josh Burning was able to finally come over and put him down. Or make that Jeff Seymour finally came over and put him down. But not before he did got to the 40-yard line, a pickup of 12, and another first down for the Bees. So St. Ambrose has found something here all of a sudden. Three straight plays, three straight first downs. Porter goes out of the ball game, and Catone comes back in. Wide to the right side goes Pavich. And Diaz. Gives it straight ahead to the fullback Rickson this time, and he has his feet taken out from under him by Snyder as he gets inside the 40 to about the 38. Pick up a two on the play, make it second down and eight yards to go. Second down, eight yards to go for the... St. Ambrose Bees. No score in the ball game. Duffin spins, gives it off to Porter, who's back in. Porter on the right side. He's to the 35 and down to about the 32 yard line, maybe even the 31. Let's see where they umpire, where they're going to put the football. Lionel Porter, who had 123 yards last year against the Crusaders. Down to the 31, so a pickup of seven. It's going to be third down and a yard to go. Third down and a yard to go for the St. Ambrose University Bees. Rutubrick and Pavich out wide left. Duffin barks out the signal, spins it around. Here's Porter again to the right side. This time caught and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Coming up is Shane Snyder. Also, Ronnie Sazone up there, number 16. And it's going to be fourth down as Porter did not gain anything. Be fourth down and one at the 31-yard line. Twelve minutes to go in the first half. No score in the ball game. Valparaiso Crusaders. St. Ambrose Fighting Bees. Dr. Bill Steinbrecher, the athletic director at Valparaiso University, will be our guest at halftime. We'll talk to Dr. Steinbrecher about all the different things going on here at Valparaiso University. Hand off Porter, nothing there. As he is stacked up behind the line of scrimmage. Everybody up there that time. Shahid is in on that tackle. On the bottom of that pile is Josh Burning. Also Shane Snyder and Tom Cunningham as everybody came up. And I think Eric Miller was in on it too. A loss on the play of a yard. And Valparaiso takes over first and two at the 32-yard line. So the Crusaders do a great job that time on the fourth down. First and 10 Crusaders, see if they can get something going from about the 32. Going back is Browder. He looks over the middle, got it, man, open. Finolio goes through his hands, and then it's almost intercepted. Finolio was open, almost intercepted in the secondary by number 14. That's Ryan Sadler, but Sadler couldn't hang on. So that'll be second down and 10. 
Browder, one for nine today, passing the football for 10 yards. He's completed only one. You gotta have better production than that. Wide to the left goes Holock. And Tolbert is the slot on the left side. Browder does a, keeps it himself on the option. He's to the 40. Now pitches to Young. And Young takes it down the left side across the 45 and out to the 46 yard line. A pickup of 14 on the play. And it's first down and 10 for the Crusaders out at the 46. So uh, one of their better running plays of the afternoon as Ozzie gets 14. And it's first down and 10. The Popcorn Bowl, this one's called. In the past, they've played that on Popcorn Saturday, but they decided this year to uh, not play next week and to play it a week ahead of time. That's kind of a kickoff for the whole week of activities here in Valparaiso. Browder goes back, wants to throw, looks, looks. Now rolls, fires it out here for Young. Young's got it at the 50 and down at the 49-yard line. A good catch by Ozzie, but he only picked up three. It's going to be second down and seven at the 49. So Ozzie with a nice catch there. Didn't get much out of it. It's second down and seven at the 49-yard line. Browder sets him down, spins it around, gives it off Trevor Bell, the fullback straight ahead, breaks the tackle, he's the 45 to the 40, and down to about the 39-yard line, a pickup of 12 on the play, and another first down for the Crusaders. So Trevor Bell, the big fullback, with a big 12-yard burst, and it's first down and 10. Valparaiso inside the 40-yard line of St. Ambrose. Well, the Crusaders trying to mount a drive here. First and 10. Browder to Bell again. This time he's caught and dropped at the line of scrimmage as he surges forward for a couple. As... Uh, Jeff Polson makes the tackle on Trevor as he gets it to the 37 yard line. A pick up a two, make it second down and eight. Second and eight for the Crusaders. Bell now with 17 yards on five carries here in the first half. Still have nine minutes and 55 seconds to go. No score. First half of play. Last year was a shootout, 37 30. This year the defenses have dominated, and neither offense has been able to do much. Here in this first half, Browder comes out on the right, being chased, there's the pitch to Young. Young breaks through and gets, oh, about a yard or so as he gets it down to the 36 yard line. Defensed well that time by St. Ambrose and it's gonna be third down and seven. So third down, seven yards to go. For the Crusaders. Third and seven at the 36-yard line. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Browder trying to find something. Keeps it himself on the option. Now pitches to Young. Young's got some room down to the sideline. Look, fumble the football recovered by St. Ambrose. At about the 27-yard line, Ozzie had some room, and as he went by, somebody reached an arm out and knocked it away. And it was recovered by St. Ambrose. They'll take it over first down and 10 at the 27-yard line. And it really looked like the Crusaders had something going that time. Ozzy had some room, and he was going to get a lot more yardage than he got. But he lost the football, and St. Ambrose takes it over first down and 10. Duffin at quarterback splits the backfield. Goes back, rolls, wants to throw, fires it out here. It is knocked away and almost intercepted. So that'll be second down and 10. Jeff Seymour over that time to make the play. 
Duffin, four out of seven for 50 yards here in the first half. Browder, two out of 10 for 13. Neither team has thrown the ball very well. Porter has 41 yards on 12 carries. Young with 21 on five, and Bell with 17 on five for the Crusaders. Duffin going straight back. He's got some room out here, throws it to Porter, and he's caught and dropped immediately. John Palyak right there. Porter loses all the way back to the 20-yard line. A loss of seven on the screen pass. It's going to be third down, 17. John Palyak with a great play that time. That's Porter's third catch of the day, but uh, that one he would just as soon not have caught. Third down, 17 at the 20-yard line. Wide outs to the right side. Split backs. Duffin gives it on the counter to Porter. has got some room, but right in the middle, he's hit by Josh Burning, and down he goes at the 25. So picks up six on the play, but or make it, uh, yeah, six on the play. It's going to be fourth down and 11. And St. Ambrose is going to have to kick it away again. So St. Ambrose will kick it again with seven and a half minutes to go here in the first half and no score in the ball game. Long back to kick it away. Ozzie Young stands at about the 38. There's the kick. Oh, nice kick. High kick. Young's going to take it at the 30. No blockers ahead of him. He gets it out to about the 39, and that's as far as he's going to go. Good coverage by St. Ambrose. It'll be first down and 10. For Valparaiso up at the 39 yard line. So let's see if the Crusaders, who look like they finally had something going on the last drive, can get something going on this one. First and 10 at the 38 yard line. Nick Browder back in the ball game. Browder has not had the kind of offensive day that Tom Horn was hoping for, but it's still early. He's got 17 yards on two carries, but he is only two out of 10 throwing the football. Let's see if he can get it going here. Nick sets him down. Wide outs to both sides. Goes straight back. Wants to throw. Now he's going to keep it on the quarterback draw. He's got some room at the 45 to the 50-yard line. Router picks up 12, and that's what he does for you right there. 12-yard pickup for Nick Browder. And a first down. And quickly, the Crusaders come to the huddle as they're going with the no-huddle offense to try to uh, get something going their way. First down and 10. Browder sets him back. Gives it off to Trevor Bell. Young keeps it himself. Browder's the 40. He's inside the 40 and down to the 37-yard line. Well, he fooled me. Fortunately, the camera got him as he takes it all the way to the 37, a pickup of 13. And first down and 10 for the Crusaders. So Browder, two successive carries, goes for 25 yards on a couple of first downs. And the Crusaders on the roll again. Bell and Young, the eye formation. Nick gives it off to the fullback this time. He's to the 30 and inside the 30 to the 29. Quick hitter to Trevor Bell, and all of a sudden the option offense starting to work. Eight-yard pickup, second and two. So second down, two yards to go as Bell goes for eight. Crusaders right back to the line of scrimmage. Tolbert and Holock out wide to the right side. The eye backfield. Router rolls right. Wants to throw, finally fires it out here. Caught by Tolbert at the 10 yard line. Great catch by Michael Tolbert at the 10 yard line and a good throw by Nick Browder, a 19 yard pickup. First down and goal at just inside the 10 yard line. So all of a sudden, Browder has found the range. Again, the no huddle offense for the Crusaders. Browder up under center. First and goal inside the 10. Nick barks out the signals. 
Keeps it himself, tries to follow the fullback. He's going to get a couple of yards out of it. He'll dive to about the eight-yard line, pick up a two, make it second down and goal. Second down, goal to goal for the Crusaders, 5.37 to go. In the first half, no score in the ball game. Browder brings Young in motion. Gives it to the fullback, and Trevor is hit immediately. Nothing there. Lost a couple of yards, as a matter of fact. And it's going to be third and goal at the 10. Third down goal at the 10 yard line. Tom Horn signals the plays in from the sideline. The Crusaders in their hurry up offense. Browder goes back. Fires it out here for Young. Dives for it. It's uh, just out of his reach. They tried the fade to Ozzy, but Browder just missed him, and it's going to be fourth down and six. And let's see who's going to kick it. Bill Duke is a 5'10", 162-town freshman. And he's going to be the guy. As Gutierrez and Edwards both graduated, so Bill Duke getting his first opportunity. He'll be kicking from the 17, a 27-yard field goal attempt. It's up. It is long enough. It is good. So Bill Duke, a 5'10", 162 pound freshman puts the Crusaders on the board and with 4.41 to go in the first half it's Valparaiso 3, St. Ambrose nothing. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. Crusaders on top, 4 minutes 41 seconds to go here in the first half of play. Bill Duke his first kick for the Crusaders drills the field goal to make it a 3-0 ball game in favor of Valparaiso. And now he'll be kicking it off. For the Crusaders, approach the football and the kick. A high kick, not too deep. Got to be taken about the 13 to the 15 to the 20. 25, got some room to the 30. 35, looking for a block at the 45. The 50 and across the 50 to the 47-yard line. So St. Ambrose will have it first down and 10 at the 47. Well, Murphy and Cezone finally make the tackle for the Crusaders, but St. Ambrose will have it first and 10 at the 47-yard line. First and 10, St. Ambrose at the 47. Chad Duffin, the quarterback, spins, gives it off to Rickson, the fullback, and he'll dive for a couple of yards. Going to give him the, we'll call it the 45, pick up a two, make it second down and a long eight. Rickson's fourth carry of the day, he's got 12 yards. Well, we thought it would be an offensive ball game. Instead, it has been a defensive ball game here in the first half. At halftime, we'll be talking with Dr. Bill Steinbrecher, the athletic director at Valparaiso University. Just short of the 45 as Duffin sets him down and goes straight back, wants to throw, fires it out here. He's got Pavich. Pavich at the 40 and inside the 40 to the 37. So Brian Pavich, the Valparaiso native, makes the catch and takes it all the way to the 37-yard line, an 8-yard pickup and first down. So first and 10 for St. Ambrose. First catch of the day for Pavich. Got a little delay here as they get the stick set across the way. First down and 10 at the 37. Well, 
Straight back, there's the pass out. He got Pavich again inside the 35 and down to about the 32-yard line. So they found Pavich twice in a row, this time for five, and it's going to be second down and five at the 32-yard line. Duffin now seven out of ten for 59 yards as he tries, starts to heat up just a little bit. Or St. Ambrose, Pavich goes out wide to the right side. Tubik comes out wide to the left side in the eye backfield with Rickson and Porter, who now shifts as a slot on the left side. Give it straight ahead to the fullback. Fumble the football. Crusaders have got it on the bottom of the pile. At about the 32-yard line is number 90. That is Eric Miller came up with it as it was knocked away from Rickson. And the Crusaders take over first and 10 at the 32-yard line. So Eric Miller with the fumble recovery, first and 10 Crusaders at the 32-yard line. Well, let's see if they can get the offense going again. 2.50 to go here in the first half. As Nick Browder brings them back out. Holick goes wide to the right. Jackson in the slot on the right side. Ozzie Young is flanked out way left. Browder marks out the signals, goes straight back. Wants to keep it on the quarterback draw. He's got it to the 40, to the 45-yard line, but a flag is down. Normally, that's back where it's going to be holding. Holding against the Crusaders, the flag laying at about the 29-yard line. The big play by Browder will go for nothing. They'll move it back on the holding. We'll put it back at about the 19 where it's going to be first down and 23. First down at about 23 yards to go back at the 19-yard line. 2.42 to go in the first half. 3 nothing Valparaiso in a defensive struggle. Neither team able to do much of anything here. Browder sets him down at the 19-yard line, goes straight back to throw. Looks, looks. Now he's under a lot of pressure. Fires it out here incomplete. Trying to go, I believe, to Trevor Bell as he's being pressured by uh, Matt Verdon. And Verdon had him in his grasp as Nick got rid of the football. And goes incomplete. It's going to be second down. And 23. Second down, 23 yards to go for the Crusaders. 2.27 to go in the first half. 3 nothing. Valparaiso on top. Browder keeps it on the option, keeps it himself. He's out to the 30, to the 32, out to the 33. So Browder, with a 13-yard pickup, is going to make it third down and 10 out at the 32-yard line. So he got him back to where they started before the penalty. 57 yards unofficially for Browder on just six carries in the ball game. Ran the ball well today on the option, hasn't thrown real well so far. Wide men to both sides as Browder goes back. Fires it out here, tries to loft it for Fanolio. Fanolio had stopped his route. So Browder through the fade, and Fanolio had stopped his route. It's going to be fourth down and ten. And the Crusaders are going to have to kick it away as Paul Van Dam comes on to do the honors. Well, the minute 45 still to go here in the first half. Not a real fast-paced first half, considering we haven't had that many passes in this ballgame. There's the snap. There's the kick, high kick, not very deep. They're going to get away from it. It's going to take a Valparaiso roll inside the 20, down to the 25, and down to about the 24-yard line, and that's where St. Ambrose will put it in play, first and 10. Their own 24 with a minute 32 to go in the first half. A 27-yard field goal by Bill Duke, and that's all there's been so far in this ball game. The Crusaders lead it 3 to nothing. A 
An overcast day here at Valparaiso High School, or Valparaiso University, I should say. First down and 10 at the 24. For St. Ambrose, Duffin sets him down in the split backfield. He goes back, gives it on the counter to Porter. Got some room. He's to the 30. He spins, and down he goes at about the 33-yard line. Lionel Porter, kind of guy who really scares you every time he gets the football. He picks up nine. He's going to be second down and a yard to go. Porter now 56 yards on 14 carries in the ball game. Unofficially. So we go inside a minute in the first half. Porter on the left side of the slot. Rickson, the, there he fires it out here. He's got Pavich, catches the ball on his knees. It'll be enough for the first down as he gets it across the 35 and out to the 37 yard line. A four yard pickup, first and 10 for the Bees. First down and 10 at the 37-yard line. Don't forget at halftime, Bill Steinbrecher, athletic director, Dr. Bill Steinbrecher will be here. Nice crowd on hand for this opening game of the year for the Crusaders. And flags down everywhere. Somebody was moving, I believe. That's going to cost them five yards in the illegal procedure. That'll be first and 15 now back at the 32-yard line. First and 15 back at the 32-yard line for the Bees. 40 seconds, the clock moves, first half. 3-0 Valparaiso. Rickson splits out wide to the right this side. Porter, the only running back behind the... Duffin and Duffin comes on the option. Turns it up. He's at the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. A pickup of about six on the play. It's going to be second down and nine. You can see the difference there. Duffin is not comfortable on that option where Nick Browder comes out with a confidence of running the football, and he likes to run that option. That might be it in the first half. Let's see if they're able to get another one off. Nope. Yeah, they're going to call it, say count it as the pass is incomplete. And the first half is history. Well, at the end of the first half in our first Valparaiso Crusader football game of the 1994 season, the Crusaders go to the locker room at halftime with a 3 to nothing lead over St. Ambrose. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. If you're like most business people, you just don't have the time to plan and implement your advertising and marketing plans as you should. That's where advertising, marketing, and promotions can help. For less than the expense of a part-time employee, you can take advantage of over 24 years of advertising and marketing experience. It costs nothing to talk it over. Call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions at 477-5803 for an appointment. That's Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, 477-5803. In our hands rests the ability to lift those who have fallen, to comfort those who are troubled, to guide those who could be lost. It is the greatest power we hold, and there is no greater way to make it felt than through your united way, working harder than ever to make a lasting impact in the lives of the needy and in the hopes of your entire community. Please support your united way. Three to nothing at halftime, the Valparaiso Crusaders leading the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees, and it's our pleasure at halftime to have with us the Director of Athletics here at Valparaiso University, Dr. Bill Steinbrecher. Uh, kind of a surprising game in the first half, I guess, uh, Dr. Steinbrecher. Uh, two teams last year was 37 to 30 in a wild one, and this time it's three nothing at halftime. I guess I thought we'd have a good deal more offense than what we had. Uh, St. Ambrose uh, certainly showed a lot of defense uh, early in the game. Valparaiso University was uh, somewhat successful in, in the second quarter and moving the ball up and down the field. So maybe we'll see a little more wide open offense in the second half. 
good crowd on hand, a very good crowd for the first ball game of the year. And, of course, last year the best record since 1985. Uh, it seems like people around the area are getting very excited about Valparaiso University football as well as the rest of the athletic program, but uh, uh, people are expecting a lot this year. I believe there are higher expectations for our football program this year than, than maybe what uh, area people have had in past years. Uh, another thing that you might notice, we have a lot of kids out here. I think we have something like 99 uh, players uh, in uniform, or at least in jersey, some of them sidelined with injuries and, and some uh, because of ineligibility, but uh, that's the most players we've ever had out for our program, and we're certainly pleased for that. When you look at uh, at the state of the university, athletically especially, you have to be very, very pleased. It seems like that uh, uh, Valparaiso University just keeps getting better, getting more notoriety. Uh, people are starting to notice more. Uh, of course, the basketball program had something to do with that, but also your other athletic programs are doing pretty well. I recently wrote an article for our uh, uh, v Club newsletter, which goes out to all our alumni lettermen, in which I stated that I'm entering this year with a good deal more optimism than I have the last few, and, and that's for all of our, our programs, our, our volleyball program, and, and they're, I understand they're playing right now inside the uh, ARC arena. Uh, figures to be quite strong this year, although although pretty young, and, and I don't know if they're going to be as strong as, as uh, we would hope. Uh, of course, everybody's looking forward to the basketball, men's basketball season, where we were 20 and 8 last year and had an outstanding recruiting year, having recruited Bryce Drew, uh, Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana, but also a number of other quality players. Uh, I certainly want to mention one, Anthony Allison, who is a junior college All American. We simply have never had a junior college All American player here, and, and we've never had Mr. Basketball, so we're really looking forward to that. We have a brand new uh, women's basketball coach, Keith Freeman, who the last four years has been at St. Joseph's College and prior to that at Huntington University and has an outstanding career there. And, and given uh, a little bit of time, I think we're going to see uh, exceptionally exciting women's basketball as well. Well, it's always uh, great to talk to you and to uh, see the, the advances being made here at Valparaiso University, and it seems like that uh, uh, people are starting to notice now that, uh, that VU's on the rise. Well, I think that's right, and it's uh, a lot of it has to do with with uh, football and men's basketball because they simply are the most visible sports you have. And after being very mediocre for many years in, in our football program, we were five and five last year. It showed that we could put some points on the board, and and that's what people like. Uh, the, the same thing has to do with our men's basketball program. Uh, we've suffered through some some tough years and we've never had a winning year in division one until last year and last year was an exceptional year for us we had a, a really fine team and uh, uh, to put 20 wins on the board got everybody excited and, and when your two most visible sports uh, can generate that kind of excitement for everybody it carries over for your whole program What's your prediction for the second half of this game this afternoon? A lot more offense than we had in the first half. <laughs> I think you're going to see that from both teams probably. Yes. Well, Dr. Steinbrecher, thanks for stopping by to see us, and uh, we'll look for you the rest of the season. Thank you, Dick. Good to be here. Thank you. Dr. Bill Steinbrecher, the athletic director here at Valparaiso University. Valparaiso University leading at halftime by the score of 3 to nothing over St. Ambrose. Second half coming up in just a few moments. You're listening or you're watching uh, Valparaiso University Crusader football. As an auto owner's insurance agent, I take your needs seriously and work hard to find you the best coverage available. As an independent agent, I'm able to provide you with the policies and coverage best suited to your individual needs. You see, auto owners selects agents the same way you do, with a great deal of care. For the best coverage at reasonable rates, call your independent auto owner's agent today. Call your auto owner's agent, Harley Snyder Insurance, with offices in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Portage. Put a sock in it. That's right, put a sock in it. As you head back to school this fall, the weather's bound to cool off. So if you want to keep wearing your comfortable Birkenstocks, take our advice. Put a sock in it. Birkenstock, the comfort shoe, available at the sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way in Valparaiso. Birkenstock in six different styles and an assortment of colors sure to please. The sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way, downtown Valparaiso.
Three to nothing, Valparaiso on top at halftime. Taking a look at the statistics in the first half, the Crusaders picked up uh, six first downs to see Ambrose's eight rushing yards. Uh, Valparaiso 105 yards rushing, 79 yards for St. Ambrose. Passing yardage, Valparaiso three out of 14 for just 30 yards. Five. Uh, St. Ambrose, 8 out of 12 for 60 yards. So the total offense in the first half, not much to choose. 139 yards for St. Ambrose, 135 yards for the Crusaders. Individual leaders, uh, Browder, 58 yards on 7 carries, rushing the ball. Trevor Bell, 26 yards on 8 carries. Ozzie Young, 21 yards on 5 carries. Porter leads St. Ambrose with 57 yards on 14 carries. Rickson has 11 yards on four, and Duffin one yard or six yards on one carry. Duffin eight out of 12. Browder three out of 14. Passing the football. So at halftime, the Crusaders lead it three to nothing. The only, the only. Scoring in the first half, a 27-yard field goal at 4.41 of the second quarter by freshman Bill Duke. And he gets ready to kick off to start the second half to St. Ambrose. <laughs> so we're ready to go into the second half as the Crusaders will be on defense first. Duke approaches the football. And there's the kick. Oh, not a good kick. Goes out of bounds. And that's going to give St. Ambrose the ball out at the 35-yard line in pretty good field position to start this second half. So first and 10, St. Ambrose out at the 35-yard line. This Duke kicks it straight out of bounds. His first bad kick of the day. Well, you're going to have those once in a while. For St. Ambrose, it'll be Chad Duffin at quarterback, Keith Rickson and Lionel Porter in the backfield. The Tubrick and Pavich are the split receivers. <coughs> Splits the backfield now as Duffin gets ready. Spins it around, gives it off to Porter, trying to go around the right side. Porter on the run is caught, bounces off, now comes back the other way, looking for a block. He's going to get a bunch of them. He's at the 40. He's at the 45. He catch it back at the 50, the 45, the 40, 35, and down at the 32-yard line. Lionel Porter, great run as he tried to go right, couldn't get around the corner, bounced his way back, reverse field, and carries it all the way down to the 32-yard line in Valparaiso territory, a 33-yard pickup on the play for Porter. By far the biggest play of the ball game. Wide to the right goes Pavich. Wide to the left side comes Votubrick. Duffin. Long count this time, spins around, gives the fullback Rickson straight ahead, gets it to the 30 to the 29. Uh, pick up out of three on the play, make it second down and seven at the 29 yard line. So second down and seven yards to go for the Bees at the 29. A 33 yard run by Lionel Porter. The B's in pretty good shape. Duffin in the eye formation this time. Wide men to both sides. Goes back, gives it off to Porter. Straight ahead, and he slips and falls. He gets to the line of scrimmage. Porter picked up maybe a yard on the play. John Harrington in on the bottom of that pile, along with uh, Eric Miller. And a pickup of a yard. Make it third down and six at the 28. Well, offensively, neither team has shown a whole lot here in this ball game. Pavich goes out wide right. Votrubic comes out wide to the left side, the eye backfield, with Rickson at full back, and the tailback is Porter Hill slot on the left side now as Duffin 
Marks out the signal. Goes straight back to throw. Fires it out here for Pavich. Got him, and Pavich struggles close to the first down at the 22, but he's going to be short, I believe. Pavich, with the catch, will get it down to the 22, and they're going to call a first down, first and 10 for St. Ambrose at the 22-yard line. So Brian Pavich, fourth catch of the day. The Valparaiso native is uh, doing pretty well in front of the hometown crowd. He comes out wide to the left side. This time as Motruba goes out wide to the right. Now Porter's the slot on the right side as they split that backfield. Gives to the fullback, Rickson, and Rickson takes it to the 20-yard line, fumbles the football, and Valparaiso picks it up. Second time today that Rickson has coughed it up on the bottom of the pile is Tom Cunningham. And it looks like Cunningham has picked it up for the Crusaders, where it'll be first down and 10 at the 20-yard line. So the Crusaders get another break, the second fumble recovery of the day. Let's see what they can do offensively. Here in the second half, as Nick Prouder joins the huddle, Prouder at quarterback, you'll have Trevor Bell and Isaac Young behind him in the backfield. Doug Holick comes out wide to the right, Joe Fanolio. Interior line, Evan Fitzgerald's the center, Jacob Adams, John Lyon, Mark Galagia, and Kevin McHale across that front wall. The tight end is Daryl Jackson, Prouder, fires. He's got Fanolio at about the 27-yard line, and that time Nick threw a strike to Joe Fanolio, his first catch of the day. So Fanolio picks up seven. It'll be second down and three. First catch of the day for Fanolio. One of the better receivers on this Crusader team from last year. Hollick goes wide to the right. Heinrich in the ball game. He's the slot on the right side. Stay in the eye formation. Browder keeps it on the option, 35. He cuts to the 40-yard line, ducks his way up to about the 42 and 43. Nick Browder to about the 42, and a flag is down. and might have a late hit. Let's see what they're going to call. A pickup of 15 yards on the play and a personal foul against St. Ambrose. So that's really going to hurt. The personal foul will take it from the 42 to about the 43 in St. Ambrose territory. So Browder, who has not uh, passed the ball all that well in the ball game today, doing a great job on the ground as he comes out on the option. I have him unofficially up at 72 yards now on seven carries. That's about 10 yards a carry. 11.52 to go, third quarter, 3-0 Valparaiso. The Crusaders moving the football up near midfield or into uh, St. Ambrose territory down at the 42-yard line. Linolio comes in with the play from Coach Tom Horn. Tolbert, Michael Tolbert, splits out wide to the left. Linolio's the slot on the left side. The tight end is Matt Kruper, a 6'1", 234-pound sophomore in the ball game. Straight ahead it goes to Bell, the fullback, inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Trevor Bell picks up three. Going to be second down and seven at the 39. Second down, seven yards to go at the 39-yard line for the Crusaders. Now Brazo on top, 3 nothing is what has not been an offensive display as we had expected. It's been a defensive display. Both teams with about the same amount of yardage in that first half. St. Ambrose had a good drive going, then coughed it up. Let's see what the Crusaders can do. Browder pitches to Young. Young trying to get around the corner. Powers his way forward to about the 36. Ozzie was hit and just powered his way forward for another couple of yards down to the 36, where it's going to be third down and four. Third down, about four yards to go as Ozzie picks up three. They've not been able to get Ozzy to the outside as of yet and into that open field where he is so, so dangerous. Crusader crowd trying to get into this one. Wide men to both sides. As Browder heads on the option left, now cuts it back to the middle and dives forward. 
to about the 32-yard line. That's going to be close to the first down. A lot's going to depend on where they're going to spot it, and if he's inside the 32, he's going to have it. He's right on the 32. I think he's probably got it, but they're going to bring the chain in from across the way to make sure. Ten minutes and three seconds to go, third quarter. Three-nothing the score of the ball game as they bring the chain in. Bob Mahoney and the Valparaiso Lions Club. Stretch it out, first down, Valparaiso. The Lions Club, as they have for some 25 years, I believe, uh, providing the chain gang here at the Valparaiso University football games. I told Bob we'd get a close-up of him, and we did when he brought the chain out, so he ought to be happy, huh? First and 10 at the 32-yard line for the Crusaders as they try to widen this advantage. They're up only 3-0. So Browder brings them to the line of scrimmage. Tries to check off a little bit, and everybody's moving except the ball in the center. Well, that just didn't look very good from the start. So it's going to move them back five to the 37, where it's going to be first down and 15 for the Crusaders. You can see when Nick came to the line of scrimmage, he started looking around. Something just didn't appear to be right from the start. 9.35 to go in the third quarter. Browder sets him. In the eye formation, Nick goes back, gives it to Young. Young off the right side, dives to the 35, to the 34. So Ozzy picks up three. Ozzy's one of those kind of players that you can hear the crowd kind of hold its breath every time he gets the football because at any time he could break one. So far, St. Ambrose has done a great job of holding him in check. Held him to just 21 yards in that first half. We have him now with 27 on seven carries. Second down and 12 at the 34. Bell, the only back behind Browder. They give it on the reverse to Young. Needs a block. He gets it inside the 30 and down to the 29. So he picked up five. A good defensive play that time by the Fighting Bees, number 46, in on that tackle. For the Bees, that's Loris McElmeal. And uh, he's kind of hurt as he comes off slowly. And he got his bell rung, and it's going to be third and seven at the 29 as McElmeal goes off. Third down and seven at the 29-yard line. Well, in our future telecast, former Valparaiso University football coach Bill Cook will be with us to provide color commentary. Uh, had some other commitments that came up this today so he couldn't be with us here in this opening game but he'll be here for all the rest and we'll have five more all the home football games for the Crusaders will be teleclassed you hope you'll be with us two weeks from today will be our next Browder down the middle he's got a man wide open and he missed him Nick Browder had the sophomore tight end Matt Cruper wide open and just missed him Nobody covered up Cooper, and he was running free down the middle of the field, and Browner just couldn't get it there. So it's going to be fourth down and seven for the Crusaders. And we'll see what we're going to do. Tom Horn discussing it on the sidelines. And he's going to go for it on fourth down and seven as Holick comes in the ball game. Heinrich goes out wide to the left. Holick wide to the right. Number three there, Doug Holick. Ozzie is in the wing. Holick goes in motion. Router rolls left. Got the time to throw. Stands in, fires it out. Here he's got Heinrich. Inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Or inside the 15 and about the 13-yard line. I correct myself. 
So Browder, that time, throws a shot to Heinrich for 16 and a first down. That's the kind of arm that Nick Browder has. He has not thrown the ball well today, but that's the kind of arm we saw last year and probably will see before the year's over this year. It needs a little bit of consistency. First catch by Heinrichs today. And it's first down and 10 at the 13-yard line for the Crusaders. Browder rolls, pitches to Young, and rolls it to him, and Ozzie has to get on it. Looked like that maybe Browder and uh, Trevor Bell, the fullback, collided, and Browder uh, had a lot of trouble with that one. Loss of about four on the play, make it second down and 14 at the 17-yard line. A second down, 14, the ball back at the 17-yard line. Well, they have the clock stopped. I'm not sure exactly why that is. On a ground play, uh, should be moving. But at any rate, second down, 14 at the 17. Browder gives it straight ahead to Bell. Bell busts inside the 15 down to the 10-yard line. Trevor Bell for seven. Gets them to the 10. It'll be third down, seven yards to go at the 10-yard line. The Crusaders can get a first down at about the three. Actually, at about the four, they could get a first down. So they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. They could get a first down and keep it going. But they'd like, of course, to get the touchdown. Valparaiso leading it three to nothing. Browder rolls left. Wants to throw, fires it out here, and under throws Joe Flanolio, who tried to make a diving catch in the end zone. So it's going to be fourth down and seven at the 10. And here comes the field goal unit again. Number 91, Bill Duke, a 5'10, 162 pound freshman. From Wilson Central, New York. On to try the field goal. It'll be another 27-yarder. A 27-yard attempt. Van Dam to hold. The kick is up, and it is good. So Duke drills a second one of the day. And the Crusader lead climbs with 6.41 to go in the third quarter. It's now Valparaiso, 6. St. Ambrose, nothing. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. The Purdue Christmas Show, Branson, Missouri, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Mall of America, the Holland Tulip Festival. Just a few of the attractions visited by Getaway Tours. Getaway Tours is the only touring company in Northwest Indiana that is a registered member of the National Tour Association. So if you're a member of a group that might be interested in an escorted tour for a week or just a day, have Getaway Tours take care of all the details. Call Getaway Tours at 477-4771. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the Foul Ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, the Foul Ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, the Foul Ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. Six nothing, Valparaiso, 6.41 to go, third quarter. Bill Duke approaches the kickoff. A high kickoff again, not too deep. Gonna be taken at about the 20 by Catone. 25, still on his feet, and down he goes up at about the 29-yard line. On the bottom of that pile is number 39, Kurt Sajowski. And it'll be first down and 10 at the 29-yard line for St. Ambrose. They trail now 6-0. Two field goals by Bill Duke have been the difference in this ball game. Otherwise, neither team's had a chance to do much. Chad Duffin, the 6'2 freshman, still a quarterback. 
Got Rickson and Lionel Porter behind him. That's the running backs. Duffin rolls to the right. Fires deep. Got his man behind everybody. Caught. Pavich. Valparaiso's Brian Pavich makes the catch all the way down at the 32-yard line. Well, I tell you what, he's having a big day in front of the home crowd. Uh, 39-yard reception, first and 10 at the Valparaiso 32-yard line. Got to be a thrill for Brian to come home uh, and have such a big ball game. He's now uh, five catches for 64 yards. He comes out wide to the left side. But Trubert goes out wide to the right. The eye backfield. Duffin goes back, gets it off to Porter. Caught a drop behind the line of scrimmage. Josh Burning knifing in to make the tackle on Porter for a loss back at the 35, a loss of three on the play, where it's going to be second down and 13. So Burning providing the leadership they expect out of the junior linebacker that time makes the big play. Porter comes out to the left side in the slot. Duffin goes back, fires it out of Pavich. That's been open all day long as they give him the little hitch pattern, and he gets it at the 30 and spins down to about the 28-yard line. Well, that's a pickup of about seven. It's going to be third down and six. So Pavich is having a big afternoon. That's his sixth catch. They seem to be able to go to him just about whenever they want to. A six-foot, 175-pound senior for the Bees who grew up right here in Valparaiso. Duffin going straight back. Pump fakes this time. Now he's under a lot of pressure. Fires it out here, and he underthrows everybody. Getting a lot of pressure that time from Tom Cunningham, who was all over Duffin. So it's going to be fourth down and six at the 28-yard line. The Bees will go for it. They trail 6-0. This game far from being over. Now Fraser with two field goals by Bill Duke, both from 27 yards, one in the second quarter, one here in the third. Bob Kenny yelling out at his defense. Defensive coordinator for the Crusaders. Duffin goes straight back. Once the screen pass, he sets it up. He's got his man. He eludes one. He's at the 30, the 25, to the 24. Going to be short of the first down. As they went to Sanchez. But he's going to be short of the first down at the 24-yard line. He only got four. He needed six. And the Crusaders have held and will take over the football first and 10. Their own 24-yard line. So first and 10, Valparaiso at the 24 with four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Six, nothing, Valparaiso on top. Tom Horn sends Nick Prater back to the huddle with the play from the sideline. Fanolio at the top of your screen, number 89 up there. There's Prater. Behind him, you see Trevor Bell and Ozzie Young in the eye formation. Tight end is Kruper. Browder goes back, wants to throw. He's got a man open. What a catch. At about the 37-yard line, a great catch by the tight end, Matt Kroper, a sophomore. Up at the 39-yard line. Kroper for a 15-yard great intercept or great reception. It's first down and 10 at the 39. Well, you've got to have a little help from your friends once in a while. Great catch by Krupers. He stretched as high as he could go and came up with it. Holick goes wide to the right. Heinrich is the slot on the right side. Browder to Bell. Flags are down. We may have a delay here. Let's see. I think the 25-second clock might have run out. Yep, illegal procedure against the Crusaders. So that'll move it back to the 34, where it'll be first down and 15. 
two weeks from today, we will be back with our second ball game of the year as the Crusaders will be hosting Millican University, another team that they beat last year in a wild one. We'll have all the home football games for you here on cable television. Browder goes straight back, sets up the screen pass, fires it out here. He's got uh, Trevor Bell at the 35 to the 40. Bell straight ahead, gets it out to about the 44-yard line. So he's going to pick up about 10. Going to be short of the first down by five, but it's going to be second down and five up at the 44-yard line. Heinrich comes in the ball game with the play from the sideline. Tolbert goes out wide to the left side. Browder going straight back. Fakes under a lot of pressure. Fires a screen out on the right side to Ozzy. To the 45. Still on his feet at the 50. To the 45 to the 40. 35. Tries to outrun him and is knocked out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. Ozzy Young, but a flag is down as Ozzy takes it out of bounds at about the 26 or 27, but a flag is down. At the end of the play, let's see what that's going to be. It's going to be holding against Valparaiso. So they'll mark off 10 yards from the end of the play at the 27. It'll still be a first down. So it'll be first and 10 at the 37 instead of the 27. A 29 yard play to Ozzie. Looked like he might break that one all the way and that's how exciting Ozzie Young can be when he gets out in the open. First and 10 at the 37. Browner back, under pressure, gets away from him. Now he rolls left. Got plenty of room, he's got to run it. Pulls it down to the 30, the 25, and out of bounds at the 24. There's that athleticism we talked about of Nick Browner again. Picks up 13 when it looks like he has no opportunity at all. 13-yard pickup down to the 24-yard line. So first and 10 for the Crusaders. Steve Heinrich comes in the ball game. Make that Scott Heinrichs, 6'4", junior. Comes in with the play. Goes out wide to the right as the slot. Holick is all the way out of the right. Nazi is split out left. Bell, the only running back behind Browder. Nick goes straight back. Wants the throw. He's going to kick it on the quarterback. Draw, and he's caught and dropped. Nice play that time by Matt Burden to stop the play as Browder Tried to take it up the middle. He got a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight at the 22. Second down, eight yards to go. The ball at the 22-yard line for the Crusaders. 2.10 to go here in the third quarter. 6-0, Valparaiso on top. Young flanks out wide to the right this time. Browder goes back, stands in, got plenty of time. Now going to have to get rid of it. Down he goes, lost the football. Let's see who's going to have it. I believe the Crusaders might have gotten it back. The sack back at the 27-yard line. A loss of five on the play. It'll be third down 13 at the 27 for the Crusaders as Burton again got in there to make a big play for the Fighting Bees. Michael Tolbert will bring the play in now from the sideline. Now the Crusaders were down knocking on the door. Now they're backing up. A 
Wide to the right side comes Heinrich. Slot on the right side is Tolbert. Ozzie out wide to the left. Browder goes straight back. Wants to throw. Fires. Heinrich. Incomplete a little bit behind him as he tried to fire it out here on the right side. And it's going to be fourth down and 13 at the 27. Might have been tipped by Dan Timmons, number 45 for St. Ambrose. I couldn't tell for sure if it hit his hands or not, but at any rate, it was behind Heinrich by the time it got there. So it's fourth down and 13 at the 27. And Browder goes into the shotgun. Rolls right. Fires it for the end zone for Hola. Touchdown! Doug Holock makes a great catch for the touchdown. But a flag is down. Let's see who that's going to be against. A flag down all the way back at about the 27-yard line. Holock's got a touchdown if it stands. It does. It's going to be against St. Ambrose. A personal foul against St. Ambrose. And what a great catch from Doug Holock. That's why he was an all-conference receiver last year. Doug can go up and get him. A 27-yard touchdown. His first catch of the day. And all of a sudden, the Crusaders feeling a little bit better about themselves. 12 to nothing. Well, they're having some uh, confusion as the extra point here. I guess they're going to go for two. Well, the Crusaders are going to try to get two out of it as Joe Finolio talks to Tom Horn. One minute exactly to go here in the third quarter. Finolio comes on as the Crusaders will try to get two to get their lead up to 14. Browder brings him to the line of scrimmage. Got Bell and Young behind him in the eye formation. Fakes it to Young. Rolls. Wants to throw. Fires back at the end zone. Wide open is Krooper for the two. Krooper was wide open in the back of the end zone. The extra two. Timeout on the field with a minute to go in the third quarter. The score now Valparaiso 14. St. Ambrose nothing. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. You're invited to enjoy delicious pancake and sausage breakfast Wednesday, September 7th at the Popcorn Tent in Valparaiso. The Downtown Valparaiso Business Association will provide the pancakes, the sausage, and beverages for only $3.50. Get your tickets today from many downtown Valparaiso merchants from the Downtown Valparaiso Business Association office on the lower level of the NBD Bank Building at the Popcorn Office or buy them at the door. Serving starts at 7 at the Popcorn Tent the corner of Lafayette and Jefferson Streets, Valparaiso. Indiana 105 is your local Northwest Indiana radio station with local Northwest Indiana news and local Northwest Indiana weather, including exclusive up-to-the-minute color radar reports. Indiana 105 has Jim and Chris in the morning, Phil King in the afternoons, and Steve Witt in the evenings. And we play the best country music in Northwest Indiana. We're your number one country music station, Indiana 105. One minute to go, third quarter, 14 to nothing, Valparaiso on top. A great catch by Doug Hullock. For the first touchdown of the year for the Crusaders, Bill Duke approaches the kick, and there's the kickoff again, a high, short kick. Going to be caught and out of bounds by St. Ambrose at about the 32. If he'd let it go, he would have had it to 35. But it'll be St. Ambrose ball, first down and 10 at about the 32, 33 yard line. So the Bees trailing now by a 14 to nothing sale, uh, score. Try to get something going. Last year, if you remember, over at St. Ambrose, Valparaiso had a big lead and then had to. Hold off the bees in a 37-30 wild one. First and 10 at the 33-yard line for St. Ambrose. 
Chad Duffin now with the T formation backfield, the pitch to Porter, trying to get around the corner, steps inside at the 35, and then back he goes. Lionel Porter, Shane Snyder in on that tackle. Also in there is Jeff Seymour. They're going to give him up to the 36-yard line. A pick up a three on the play, make it second down and seven. This will probably be the last play, might be the last play of this third period. But Trubrick out wide to the left side. Pavich out wide to the right with the eye backfield. As Duffin barks out his signals and goes straight back. He's caught from behind. Ball gets loose. It's now going to call it an incomplete pass. Took the official a while to make up his mind as to whether or not he was going to call that a pass or not. But he finally did. So it goes as an incomplete pass. It's going to be third down and seven. Twelve out of 17 for Duffin in the ball game, according to our unofficial statistics. Brown are doing a whole lot better now. Nine out of 21 for 136 yards and a touchdown. Duffin going straight back, wants to throw. Under some pressure, fires out here. He's got Pavich again at the 44-yard line. As the third quarter comes to an end. So a first down for St. Ambrose on the last play of the third quarter. And the score after three. Valparaiso 14, St. Ambrose nothing. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. If you're like most business people, you just don't have the time to plan and implement your advertising and marketing plans as you should. That's where advertising, marketing, and promotions can help. For less than the expense of a part-time employee, you can take advantage of over 24 years of advertising and marketing experience. It costs nothing to talk it over. Call Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions at 477-5803 for an appointment. That's Advertising, Marketing, and Promotions, 477-5803. In our hands rests the ability to lift those who have fallen, to comfort those who are troubled, to guide those who could be lost. It is the greatest power we hold, and there is no greater way to make it felt than through your united way, working harder than ever to make a lasting impact in the lives of the needy and in the hopes of your entire community. Please support your united way. Omen. Two Bill Duke field goals and a touchdown pass from Nick Prouder to Doug Holick. The extra point by Duke, and that's where we stand. 14-0, Valparaiso on top. First down and 10 at the 45. Duffin calls out the signals for St. Ambrose. Goes straight back, rolls right. Cunningham after him, gets away from him, caught and dropped by Saul Shaheed. He got rid of the ball just as Saul got there. Goes incomplete. It's going to be second down and 10. So second down, 10 yards to go for the Bees. 14.55 to go in the ball game. 14-0 Valparaiso. Pavich out wide to the right for Tubrick out wide to the left side as Duffin goes straight back. A lot of pressure coming straight up the middle. He rolls right. Now he's in big trouble as Polyak got there. And also John Harrington is the guy that flushed him. And then a flag goes down. I think we're going to get some extracurricular activities on the sideline against somebody. Unsportsmanlike conduct going to be called against Valparaiso. So the 15-yard penalty will be against Valparaiso, and my guess it's against John Harrington. Tom Horn has him on the sidelines, and he's not happy. Can't do those kinds of things. The ball will be moved to the 40-yard line on the personal foul, and it will be first down and 10 for St. Ambrose. 
So first and 10 for the Bees at the 41 yard line. First down 10 at the Crusader 41 for St. Ambrose. Duffin marks out a signal. Hands off to Porter, comes on the right side, caught and dropped as he gets inside the 40 to about the 39. Eric Miller, the first man on the tackle. Pick up of a couple of yards, make it second down, eight yards to go. The second and eight at the 39. Bright sunshine has arrived in Valparaiso on this Saturday afternoon. Hope you're having a hope you're having a good Labor Day weekend and uh, enjoying yourself. Duffin sets him down at the 39. Second down, eight yards to go. Split backs. Rolls fakes to Porter. Wants to throw. Under a lot of pressure, fires it out here over the head of everybody and out of bounds. Intended for Brian Pavich, it'll be third down and eight at the 39. Two weeks from today, we'll have our next ball game as the Crusaders will host Milliken University. And uh, that was a wild shootout last year over at Milliken, the Crusaders came out on top of. And We'll have it for you at the same time, same place on your dial. Third down and eight at the 39. That'll be on the 17th of September. Milliken and Valparaiso University. That's when it'll be played. If ball is fumbled as uh, Duffin came away on the snap. Got on it himself back at the 41. A loss of two. It's going to be fourth down and 10 at the 41 yard line. So it's going to be fourth down 10 at the 41. Crusaders leading 14 to nothing, and it appears uh, St. Ambrose decided they're going to go for it. Trailing by two touchdowns, but Tubrick goes out wide to the left side. Pavage comes out wide to the right. Duffin, a transfer from Western Illinois University, goes straight back. Wants to throw, stands in, fires for Tubrick, knocked away. Great play by Andre Murphy, and a flag comes down. Looked like Murphy made a clean play, but a flag came in from the back side, and that's probably going to be pass interference. And that's what it's going to be. Pass interference called on Andre Murphy. A 15-yard penalty. It'll be first down and 10. At the... 27 yard line. Oh, what a tough break. Looked like Andre had made a great play that time as he came around and knocked that one away, but the official said he must have grabbed him with his left arm as he came around with the right to knock the pass away. And it's first and 10 at the 27 for St. Ambrose. Duffin spins to Porter, caught in the backfield, and down he goes. And straight up the middle was Art Moline. And Art had him just as Porter got the ball. Moline had Porter. A loss back to the 30-yard line. A loss of three where it's going to be second down and 13 at the 30-yard line. So a great play by Moline. And it's going to be second down and 13. Duffin on the draw, gives it up to Porter. He's to the 30, 25, the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Lionel Porter from 30 yards out, and that's what we were talking about. This kid can fly. You can't ever relax against him. He got the handoff on the delay, cut it to the outside, and took it down the sideline for the touchdown, 30 yards. And St. Ambrose is on the board with 12.20 to go in the ball game. On to kick, Pete Ivanek. A 5'10", 170-pound junior, and what do we have a... 
timeout called by St. Ambrose. They only had 10 players out there, so they wanted to stop things, even though the clock doesn't move anyway. So there's timeout on the field with 12.20 to go in the ball game, and it is Valparaiso 14 and St. Ambrose 6. The D's with a great play there by Porter, 30-yard run, which uh, unofficially we have him now for 20 carries for 118 yards in the ball game. As uh, he uh, is that kind of a back. You can contain him all day, and all of a sudden he breaks one, and it appears that St. Ambrose has decided to go for two. As Pavich comes back in, Porter comes back in, Vitrubic comes back in, and here comes Chad Duffin, the quarterback. So the Bees have decided they're going to go for two. They trail by eight, 14-6 in the ball game. Well, I'm not sure this is the prudent move at this point, but they've decided that's what they're going to do, and that's why they're there, and we're here. Duffin sets him down, trying for two. He rolls right, fires it out here to Porter, and he's not going to get there. Coming up quickly is Josh Burning. Two in at the extra point, no good. Timeout on the field with 12.20 to go. It is Valparaiso 14, St. Ambrose 6. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. Young with the catch. Young is on his horse. He's to the 40, 45, to the 50, to the 45, and down to the 41. Ozzy Young almost broke one. He took it on the run at about the 18-yard line, reverse field, and got it all the way to the St. Ambrose 41-yard line. And, boy, that's a backbreaker if you're on the St. Ambrose side of the field after they went down, made a nice drive, got a touchdown, and to have the Crusaders come right back at them. Well, let's see if the Crusaders can capitalize. Darren Rodriguez in that backfield now we see coming out there, number 37. Here comes Nick Browder to the huddle as the Crusaders get ready. Rodriguez in for Ozzie Young after the big kickoff return, first and 10 at the 40. Browder rolls, wants to throw. He fires it out here. Holick is wide open. He missed him. And a flag goes down, a late hit. A late hit going to be called against St. Ambrose as the ball was past Holick and out of bounds. And here came the defender across and put a lick on him that was not needed. That's Homer Zulatia. It's going to be a personal foul. It's against St. Ambrose. So that's going to move it 15 yards downfield, make it first and 10 at the 25-yard line for the Crusaders. As they're saying, Zalatia hit Holak late. Very truthfully, I'm not sure I agree with that, but uh, that's what it's going to be called. So the Crusaders will take it first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Holak comes out wide to the left side again. 12.04 to go in the ball game. 14 to 6. Valparaiso on top. Bell and Rodriguez in the I formation behind Browder. Nick gives it off to Bell. Bell straight down the middle of the 20 and down to about the 17, maybe the 16 yard line. A nine yard pickup on the run by Trevor Bell makes it second and one at the 16. Bell now 39 yards unofficially for the Crusaders. Fadolio comes back in with the play from the sidelines and Coach Tom Horn. Crusaders with some new coaches this year. Bob Maddox, of course, from Portage High School fame here. Well, his old high school doing well. And up to Bell again. Bell to 15, to the 10. To the outside, to the five, touchdown! Trevor Bell from 16 yards out for the touchdown for Valparaiso, and the Crusaders are on the board again. Well, that's what you want to do when the other team goes down and gets back in the ball game is go take one at them. It only took them two plays 
a personal foul penalty or two runs by Trevor Bell after the great kickoff return by Ozzy. And the Crusaders are on the board again and Bill Duke on to try the extra point. Snap is down, the kick is up. It's a low and just barely got there as it was partially blocked, but he got it in. So there's time out on the field with 11-14 to go in the ball game. The score now, the Crusaders 21, St. Ambrose 6. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. It's only my ear. Not when I'm not when it's black. <laughs> it might otherwise. Okay. Twenty-one six, Valparaiso's Crusaders lead the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees, as we predicted, as Bill Steinbricker predicted. More offense here in the second half. That's exactly what we have. As fielded by the St. Ambrose player with a knee on the ground, so it's going to be blown dead right there. And St. Ambrose will have it first down and ten, their own thirty-six yard line. Bell now with 55 yards on 10 carries unofficially for the Crusaders and that touchdown. So St. Ambrose trying to get back in it, trailing again by two touchdowns, 21-6. As Duffin sets him down, marks out his signal, spins it around, fakes, fakes, now rolls, wants to throw. Under a lot of pressure, fires back over the middle, he's got his man, Pavich, and what a hit! Shane Snyder put a hit on Pavich and he's down. And then bounces right back up. And I mean, Shane Snyder really blasted Brian Pavich. That's one of those hits that you can hear for a while and Pavich is going to go off because I guarantee you the bees are buzzing. A pickup of 11 and a first down. Who? Oh, you could hear that all the way up here in the press box. That was quite a hit. The eighth catch of the day for Pavich. He's had a big day coming back to his hometown to play. Duffin sets him down. Splits his backs. Got a slap man on the right side. Fakes, hands off. Coming on the trap. Is number 21. Catone. Catone will carry it back to about the 48 yard line. A pickup of only about a yard on the play. It's going to be second down and nine at the 48. Going straight back as Duffin fires it out here on the left side. He's got Vitrubic. Vitrubic breaks a tackle, gets the first down as he gets it near the 40-yard line. They're going to mark him at the 41-yard line. A pickup of 11 on the play and a first down for St. Ambrose at the Valparaiso 41-yard line. The best thing about it for St. Ambrose is it stops the clock as he got out of bounds. 9.57 to go in the ball game. 21-6, Valparaiso's Crusaders on top. Only a 3 to nothing first half, but things have heated up here in the second half as we suspected they might. Duffin goes straight back, gives it to Porter. Porter off the left side, breaks a tackle, 35-30, 25-20. 
He's to the 15, to the 10, breaks a tackle, and finally knocked out of bounds at about the seven yard line. Porter picks up 34, and one of the Crusaders is down across the way. And I believe it's number six, that's Josh Burning. So Burning down across the way, 152 yards on 21 carries for Porter in the ball game unofficially. Burning got, tried to arm tackle him and I believe might have got kicked as they went down the sideline and Josh is still on the ground across the way. And what a loss that would be for the Crusaders if uh, he could not play for a while. A 6'2", 206-pound junior linebacker, one of the guys that they really count on in that defensive backfield, a defensive secondary for the Crusaders. And he's on his feet, and that's good. There's Rob Moore. Rob, before the game, the trainer for the Crusaders, was presented a plaque by the football team in recognition of his being elected to the Indiana Sports Trainers Hall of Fame. And you see burning. It looks like the left arm is the problem. He's shaking that left hand as he walks off the field. First down and goal at the seven yard line for St. Ambrose. First down, goal to go is Duffin. Looks over the line, spins, gives it off to Porter, cuts it back to the five. Gonna be cut down right there. On the bottom of that pile is number 90, Eric Miller. Miller's had a pretty good day, called his name a lot today, got it to the five yard line, pick up a two, but it's gonna be second down and goal to go from the five. Second down, goal to go from the five-yard line for the Fighting Bees of St. Ambrose. Duffin sets him. The pitch to Porter, trying to go around the right side, catch it back, touchdown! Lionel Miller with his second touchdown of the afternoon from five yards out. And the Bees on the board again in this game so reminiscent of last year's contest when the Crusaders dominated play for most of the ball game, had the big lead, and then had St. Ambrose come fighting back. And finally the Crusaders won it 37-30. to It's now 21-12 as St. Ambrose has decided to go for two again. Goes back, fakes to Porter, wants to throw. He's got a man wide open, didn't throw him the ball, caught and dropped. Tom Cunningham came to get him as he had somebody wide open in the end zone and didn't see him. As number 88, that is Tony Diaz, was wide open in the back of the end zone and Duffin couldn't find him. 9.07 to go in the ball game. Valparaiso 21, St. Ambrose 12. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. Be nice if they'd give us a minute break, wouldn't it? Twenty-one twelve, nine minutes, seven seconds to go in the ball game. The Valparaiso Crusaders lead the St. Ambrose Bees. Mark Peterson trying to get some of his players up. They're looking for the onside kick, and there it goes. It is 
recovered by the Crusaders at about the 47-yard line. So the Crusaders will have it first and 10 in great field position. Scott Latsky was able to come up with it at the 46-yard line. Great field position for the Crusaders, but nine minutes to go in the ball game. Uh, St. Ambrose needs nine points to tie, so they're going to have to score twice. So they decided to roll the dice. It didn't work. Hollett comes out wide to the left side. Fanolio wide to the right. Bell and Young behind Nick Browder. Nick barks out his signals. Spins, wants to throw, fires it out. He's got a man wide open. Is Crooper. Crooper to the 30, the 25 to the 24. Crooper was wide open for 22 yards and a first down. First and 10 at the 24-yard line. Browder really has played well this second half after a shaky first half. They're going without the huddle again. Crusaders trying to hurry it up, get some more on the board. Browder on the option, comes out to the left, fakes, cuts it inside the 20. He's to the 15, to the 10, and out of bounds at about the 8-yard line. Nick Browder on the option to the left side carries the football all the way down to the six yard line an 18 yard pickup for Nick first down goal at the six for the Crusaders unofficially that puts Browder at 99 yards rushing today according to our statistics we'll get the official stats of course at the end of the ball game Browder sets him down at the goal at the six yard line, first and goal. Spins it around, somebody moved on the right side of the offensive line. Looked like the right tackle might have jumped too soon. Even uh, either Mark Elijah or Kevin McHale, I believe. Gonna cost him five. So it's gonna be first and goal now from the 11 yard line. Eight minutes, 44 seconds to go in the ballgame. 21-12, Valparaiso. Tolbert back in the ballgame. Michael brings a play in from the sideline. Eight minutes and 44 seconds to go in the game. Browder rolls right, wants to throw, fires it out here. He's got a man open, Colbert, and he can't get it. Tolbert curled to the inside was open, but the ball just a little bit high and Michael couldn't come up with it. It'll be second and goal. <laughs> 10 out of 23 for 158 yards for Nick Browder, according to our unofficial statistics. 21-12 the score, Valparaiso on top with eight minutes and 40 seconds to go in the ball game. Router spins, gives it off to Trevor Bell, the fullback, and he'll get a yard to the 10. Not much there that time. It'll be third down and goal at the 10 yard line. And down is John Lyon, or Kevin McHale, the 6'3", 225 pound junior, is down at about the five yard line. As they uh, start looking at his right knee or ankle, maybe if you're lucky, it's just a uh, cramp in the calf. But it looks like that uh, they're looking at the knee area, and that's uh, never a good sign. The knee was not meant for football. I'm going to mention the coaching staff for the uh, Crusaders this year, the assistant head coach. And defensive coordinator is Bob Canney. Dave Harms, the offensive line coach. Defensive line is Bob Maddox, the former Portage High School coach. Stacy Adams does the running backs. Defensive backs and special teams, that's Sam Bernardi. Wide receivers, Mark Peterson. The tight end coach is Greg Sims. Graduate assistant is Jeff Rush. And the uh, student assistant this year is Rob Rail, former quarterback, number three in the all-time offense here at Valparaiso University. Had a great season last year. Comes off on his own power, does McHale. Looks like he's going to be all right as they set him in the eye formation. 
Browder rolls right, fires it over the middle. Touchdown, Joe Fanolio. Joe Fanolio with the touchdown catch with 8.13 to go, and the scoring has really picked up in this ball game. Well, we thought it might. These two teams uh, have too many weapons for it to go along the way that first half did. Bill Duke on to try the extra point kick. He's hit three out of three so far today, plus two field goals. Snap down, kick up. Looks good, and it is. So Duke hits another, and there's timeout on the field with 8.13 to go in the ball game. It is VU 28, St. Ambrose 12. You're watching Valparaiso Crusader football. Things have heated up a little, huh? <coughs> I lost track of how many breaks I've taken, so I'm just keep keep running them. I got uh, I got three more for next game already. We're gonna we're gonna get some eventually. Line drive kick rolling along and now being kicked around, finally picked up, and down it goes. They were having all kinds of trouble fielding it as number 27, Scott Lasky, came down and made the big hit. And the Crusaders have everything going their way right now. It'll be first and 10, St. Ambrose at the 12. 28-12, the Crusaders on top after leading only 3-0 at halftime. Now they're up by 16, and a happy Crusader crowd. Really a nice crowd on hand, both from uh, Valparaiso and from St. Ambrose. They watched a pretty good football game. Duffin goes back, gives it off to Porter. Porter's going to try to come off that left side. Might have got a yard at that. Porter's had a big day, unofficially 159 yards. No gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 at the 12. Second down, 10 yards to go. The ball at the 12-yard line. For the bees. Chad Duffin remains a quarterback. He rolls left. Gives it off to Porter. Comes on the delay. Porter jukes one man, jukes another at the 20, 25. He's to the 30, 35 and out of bounds at about the 37, 38 yard line. And Porter is down on the sideline. Oh, what a nifty runner he is. Picks up 26 yards on a play that didn't look like it was going to go anywhere. And that's 185 yards unofficially we have for Porter in the ball game on 24 carries. First and 10. Well, they're going to give him the 39, so give him another yard, make it 186 yards. He goes out. Catone comes back in. As Duffin goes back, fakes, gives it off to Catone, coming off the left side, and he is blasted as he gets right to the line of scrimmage. Might have got a yard out of it. It's going to be second down and nine at the 40. So a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine. Two weeks from today, we will have the game between Valparaiso and Milliken. Channel 23 of Multimedia. We'll have that at 7.30 and again at 9.30 in the morning on Monday following that game. 
Duffin goes back, wants to throw. Flag is down. He fires it out here. It's incomplete, but a flag is down. That's usually where you're going to get a hold. And if you're in Lake County on U.S. Cable Channel 16 on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock following the games, illegal block against St. Ambrose. I think it might be on 77, Ryan Richards, a 6'3", 265-pound junior. That's for a spot foul, so it comes from the 35 and goes back to the 25-yard line. So it's, in effect, a 15-yard penalty, second down 24, back at the 25-yard line. 6.34 to go in the ball game. Duffin will bring him up to the line of scrimmage. Split backs. Spins, fakes, stands, fires it out here. It is over the head of the receiver. The flag goes down as number 16, Ronnie Sazone, grabbed the receiver as he went by him. Sanchez went by Sazone. Sazone grabbed him. So pass interference is going to be called, I believe, against Ronnie Sassone. You can see that what happened just as the ball got there. Sassone grabbed him by the shoulder. And so pass interference, the call. Against Valparaiso. And a first down for St. Ambrose. So the Bees... We'll have it up at the 35-yard line. First and 10 at the 35, 6.29 to go in the ball game. 28-12, Alfarezo on top. Chad Duffin, the freshman quarterback for the Bees. Goes back, Porter back in the ball game. Duffin looks deep. Now fires it out here for Pavich. He's got him at the 46-yard line. Brian Pavich with another catch. Picks up at 11 and another first down. Pavich has caught nine passes today. That's one of those that got away. He is uh, originally from Valparaiso, but he's at St. Ambrose and having a big, big day front of the home crowd today. Yeah, let's see what the problem is. We got an in oh well, they're trying to get the chains moved. 622 to go in the ball game. 28-12. First and 10 St. Ambrose just across the 46 yard line. Well the offenses have certainly picked up here in the second half. This is more like what we thought we would see the whole ball game. Bright sunshine out now, although the clouds are still there. Duffin goes back and rolls right. Under a lot of pressure, fires, intercepted by Valparaiso. Interception by number 16, Ronnie Sizzo. Stepped inside just at the last moment to pick it off. So Sassone with the interception, the first of the afternoon, and the Crusaders will take it over first down and 10 at their own 48-yard line with 6.17 to go in the ball game, And a new quarterback going to be in there, Mike Rolando, going to get a chance to run the offense. So Browder, who struggled in the first half, really has looked sharp here in the second, takes a seat. We have a new fullback, Nate Bobak, a 5'8", 190-pound junior, and Darren Rodriguez, a 5'10", 196-pound sophomore in a tailback. So Tom Horn going to give some of the other guys a chance to play a little bit here this afternoon. Rolando gives it off to Bobak, straight down the middle of the 50 and down to the 45-yard line. A pickup of seven. It'll be second down and three at the 45. So Bobak picks up seven on his first carry of the day. Might be a little bit quicker than Bell, certainly not as strong. Well, the Crusaders feeling pretty good right now at 28-12. The 
5.45 to go. Tobert out wide to the left. Also out wide to the left is Josh Elwine. Rolando on the option. Gets it to the 44-yard line. A good defensive play that time by St. Ambrose. Number 51, Jeff Paulson, the 6'4 junior defensive end. So Rolando might have picked up a half a yard. Give him a yard on it. Make it third down and two. At the 44. Orlando, not a great passer. A very, very good running back. Wide to the left side comes Swopes. Caius Swopes for the Crusaders. And somebody moves on that right side. And jumping too quick is John Bennett. So that's going to cost five yards. Put it back at the 49. Will it be third down and seven? Four minutes and 52 seconds to go in the football game. 28-12, Valparaiso on top. For all the running we've had, this has been kind of a long football game. Rolando fakes, comes around the left side, keeps it to 45, still on his feet, dives to the 40-yard line. Mike Rolando with a nice run, got it down to about the 41-yard line. Pick up of eight and a first down. So first and 10 for the Crusaders at the 41. First and 10, Crusaders at the 41-yard line with 4.37 to go in the ball game. Orlando brings them up in the I formation. Parks out his signals. Spins it around, gives it off the fullback. Bowback, Bowback straight ahead. He'll get it near the 35 yard line. Picks up about six on the blade. Play gets second down and four. Crusaders content to just try to run out the clock if they can. Inside four minutes to go. 14, Dave Massat is into the ball game. A 5'11", 195-pound sophomore. A wide to the right side he goes. Bobek and Rodriguez in the I formation behind Rolando. And somebody moves on the left side this time. That's John Lyon. He went too quick. The 6'5", 250-pound senior. So again, the Crusaders hurt themselves with a procedure penalty. It's going to be second and nine back at the 40. Three and a half minutes left in the ball game as the Crusaders lead it by 16, 28-12. With only 3.32 in the ball game and the clock moving. Alparaiso looking for their opening win of the year. They beat St. Ambrose to start the season last year, 37-30 over Davenport. Orlando barks out the signals. Mike spins, keeps it on the option. He's got some room, fakes the pitch, now takes it to 35 and dives to about the 32-yard line. A pickup of eight on the play. It's going to be third down on about a yard at the 32 for Orlando. But a flag is down. Let's... Now, that's not a flag. That's the towel that Orlando wears. It was jerked out. Crusader colors, of course, are uh, gold, and so the flag is gold, and when it got jerked out, it looked like one of the flags from the officials were out there. So it's third down, a yard to go for the Crusaders. At the 32, Orlando goes back, wants to throw, fires it out here, he's got a man wide open. Number 84, that is Jim Dunham. All the way down to the 21-yard line, a pickup of 11 on the play and a first down. Who said 
that Rolando couldn't throw. Certainly not him. A nice toss that time to Dunham, and it's first down and 10. So the Crusaders trying to get more. Wide to the left goes Uskert and Merrick. Orlando gives it straight ahead to Bobek, and Bobek will get maybe a couple of yards as he goes straight ahead to the 19. Pick up a two, make it second down at about eight. Now take that back, not Bobek. That was 28 who's in there, and that is uh, Bob Cracknell. So Cracknell picks up a couple of yards. Ball at the 19, where it's second down at about eight. Minute and a half to go in the ball game. 28-12, Valparaiso on top. Crusaders look very good, especially here in the second half. Rolando breaks the tackle, keeps it, now pitches. Around the corner to about the 11-yard line is Jody Hart. And Hart carries for eight and another first down. First and ten, Crusaders at the eleven. So Hart picks up 11. So the Crusaders are able to get a lot of people in there that haven't uh, played before. Get them some work. With a minute 10 to go in the ball game. Leading by 16. Crusaders would like to get another score up. But they probably, well not probably, they do have enough points. Well, Orlando's going to call a timeout. He didn't like something he saw out there. So there's timeout with a minute two to go in the ball game. The score, Valparaiso 28, St. Ambrose 12. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. As an auto owner's insurance agent, I take your needs seriously and work hard to find you the best coverage available. As an independent agent, I'm able to provide you with the policies and coverage best suited to your individual needs. You see, Auto Owners selects agents the same way you do, with a great deal of care. For the best coverage at reasonable rates, call your independent Auto Owners agent today. Call your Auto Owners agent, Harley Snyder Insurance, with offices in Valparaiso, Chesterton, and Portage. Put a sock in it. That's right, put a sock in it. As you head back to school this fall, the weather's bound to cool off. So if you want to keep wearing your comfortable Birkenstocks, take our advice. Put a sock in it. Birkenstock, the comfort shoe, available at the sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way in Valparaiso. Birkenstock in six different styles and an assortment of colors sure to please. The sports shop, 60 Lincoln Way, downtown Valparaiso. Minute two to go in the ball game, 28-12. The teams came out, were ready to go, and uh, for some reason the official stopped it, and I'm not sure why. The uh, referee comes over to talk to Tom Horn. There's 11 guys out there on both sides, so I'm not sure exactly what the problem is. Crusaders, Crusaders have it, first down and 10. They're yelling something up to the... Press by oh I see the uh, the coaches the coaches earphones for St Ambrose have gone dead so therefore Valparaiso has to quit using theirs that's the rules so since the uh, field phones are not working for St Ambrose Valparaiso can't use them either so with a minute two to go it's not that critical Rolando sets him down at the 11 yard line spins it around wants to throw. Now he's going to take off. He's got all the room in the world. Touchdown, Mike Rolando. So Rolando takes it in with 57 seconds to go. Mike Rolando from 11 yards out. And the Crusaders are on the board again. It has been a great display here in the second half for the Crusaders. This is the kind of offensive football we thought we were going to see. They struggled a little bit in the first half, but here in the second, they have really turned it on. And it will be Bill Duke on to try for his fifth extra point of the day. He sets it down. The kick is blocked. It's caught by Bobek. He struggles forward trying to get to the end zone, and he's not going to make it. So the extra point is no good. 
And the score balloons to 34 to 12. The Valparaiso University Crusaders on top of St. Ambrose. With less than a minute to go in the football game, the Crusaders leading by 22. It's going to take a miracle on the part of St. Ambrose. Mark Peterson in the middle of the huddle there. Talking to his special teams, Sam Bernardi, the uh, other coach that you see walking around there, Stacy Adams at the bottom of your picture. There's Tom Horn. Got to be a happy man. His team on top by 22 points. With less than a minute to go in the uh, football game. So Rolando got to come in and play some quarterback, did a good job of moving the team, got the touchdown himself on the 11-yard run. He got 20 yards out of three carries. And the Crusaders have an insurmountable lead at this point. Millican University in two weeks will be our next telecast of Crusader football. On the 17th of September, you can see it on Channel 23 of Multimedia Cable Vision uh, that night at 7.30 or Monday morning at 9.30. And on Thursday nights on U.S. Cable Channel 16, if you're watching us there in Lake County, be Thursday nights at 7 for that game following uh, the play on Saturday. There's the kickoff. It's going deep, taking it about the 8, 15 to the 20, 25 and down right there. So St. Ambrose will have it first down and 10 at about the 25-yard line. 51 seconds left in the ball game. Valparaiso on top, 34-12. 24-yard line, they're going to mark it now for St. Ambrose. Let's see if uh, new quarterback in there is number 17, Dan Guza. So Guza in at quarterback for the Bees as they get some work for their second unit also. Spins it around. Guza goes back, wants to throw, fires it out here. And incomplete as he throws it too low, intended for number 25. We don't have a 25 on our roster, so we'll guess who that is. I knew I was in trouble earlier today when uh, I asked the radio station from... Davenport, who number 21 was, and they don't have him on their roster either. So they've changed some numbers since the rosters were sent in. Wide to the left side goes the mystery man. Wide to the right side, the other mystery man, 21 and 25. High formation backfield behind Guza. He goes straight back, under pressure, fires it out here. He's got a man open at about the 29 to the 30-yard line. That is Robert Sanchez. And Sanchez will pick up about six on the play. It's going to be third down and four at the 30. Sanchez with his third catch of the day. 15 seconds to go in the ball game. Straight back goes Guza. Wants to throw, stands in, fires it out here. He's got uh, his fullback, number 35. That's Brian Manfrey, and Manfrey takes it all the way out to the 43-yard line. A 13-yard pickup and a first down at the 43 with two seconds to go. So as soon as they mark this one for play, this game will be history. Nope, St. Ambrose is going to call a timeout. So St. Ambrose decides to call a timeout with just two seconds on the clock, trailing by 22 points. Well, let's see if they're going to uh, take the entire timeout or not. They have the choice not to if they decide they want to just come out and play. But uh, apparently they're going to take it all. And it allows uh, Valparaiso to get some new players in there that haven't been out there yet. 92 in the ball game we see Chris Roll, 94 Chris Baker, uh, 41 coming off. That's uh, Willie Little. 43 out there is uh, Matt Barker. Eight is Tim Risen. Andre Murphy is still there. 
26 is Noel Devona who's been in. Two seconds to go in the ball game. First and 10 at the 43. This will be the last play of the game, barring anything unforeseen. Throws it long right down the middle. It's intercepted. He's the 35 to the 40, to the 45. Cuts it back to the 50, to the 45 and down right there. And that's it. On the last play of the ball game, Scott Latsky makes the interception. And the Valparaiso Crusaders have opened the season victoriously over the St. Ambrose Fighting Bees by the score of 34 to 12. So the Crusaders 1-0 on the year. The Fighting Bees fall to 0-1 in the opening game for both teams. Crusaders now will take a week off and be back against Milliken in two weeks, and we'll have it all for you. The final score once again, Valparaiso 34, St. Ambrose 12. You're watching Valparaiso University Crusader football. The Purdue Christmas Show, Branson, Missouri, Branson, Missouri, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, the Mall of America, the Holland Tulip Festival, just a few of the attractions visited by Getaway Tours. Getaway Tours is the only touring company in Northwest Indiana that is a registered member of the National Tour Association. So if you're a member of a group that might be interested in an escorted tour for a week or just a day, have Getaway Tours take care of all the details. Call Getaway Tours at 477-4771. For the collector, for the fan, for birthday gifts, anniversaries, Christmas gifts, or any special occasion, it's the foul ball. Larry and Kathy Astrologies invite you to visit. Whether your sport is football, baseball, basketball, or hockey, the foul ball has cards, memorabilia, and unique gift ideas. Remember, the foul ball, 51 Jefferson, Valparaiso. Thirty-four, twelve. The final score: the Valparaiso Crusaders defeat St. Ambrose. It was three nothing at halftime. The Crusaders scored uh, the field goal with six forty-one to go in the third quarter to make it six nothing, and then a touchdown pass, Nick Browder to Doug Holak from twenty-seven yards out with one minute to go in the third quarter. They went for two. They got that as Browder found the Matt Krupper, and it was 14-0 after three, but in the fourth quarter, the Crusaders put this one away. After St. Ambrose got back to 14-6, at 12-20, the Crusaders scored again at 11-14 to make it 21-6, Trevor Bell for 16 yards. 